You can't see it and you won't hear it coming, but Clostridium difficile is a global peril on the rise. Although worldwide figures are hard to come by, the hospital superbug is responsible for 14,000 deaths per year in America alone. I'm Tamara Sheward in Sydney, where an Australian-based pioneer is taking on this aggressive disease and a host of other stomach disorders with a solution that's not pretty, but is proving astonishingly potent. Clostridium difficile is a pathogenic bacteria sometimes found in the human digestive system. It doesn't normally cause problems as its growth is controlled by other types of bacteria. But when the natural balance of microbes in the gut is upset by antibiotics, Clostridium difficile can multiply rapidly, releasing toxins that can cause diarrhea and inflammation, and in some cases, fatal kidney failure. I've come to Sydney's Centre for Digestive Diseases to meet Professor Thomas Barodi. Hello, how are you going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. The professor is at the front line of the global battle against Clostridium difficile. So here is a little quiet bug that you catch in the hospital, gives you terrible diarrhea and gives you organ failure and you die. The treatment is usually more antibiotics, but this often doesn't work and up to a quarter of patients will relapse. The patients who catch this have an ongoing and ongoing infection. In spite of being treated, they just don't get better. And yet a single shot of poo brings yeah. it back to life. That's right, he said poo. It turns out the greatest weapon in the fight against C. diff is a healthy injection of the bacteria contained in someone else's excrement. Well, FMT stands for Fecal Microbiota Transplantation. It is just someone's poo converted into an injectable liquid to try and flood the colon of the person who's got the sickness. It's the implantation of someone else's bacteria. Once it's been inserted into the colon, this supersized dose of healthy bacteria quickly multiply, restoring the balance within the colon and killing off the Clostridium difficile. Some people who have had 25 diarrheal stills per day, we have seen them constipated the next day mm -hmm. because the bowel flora works so rapidly to kill Clostridium difficile. And that is just unbelievable. And it seems the healing properties of healthy bacteria are far reaching. While most research so far has been done on C. diff, doctors have found that fecal transplants could also be effective against other conditions that may be caused by bacterial imbalances. For, a yes. for four years, Jess has suffered from colitis, a crippling inflammation of the colon. Despite years of treatment, she's found no relief. Nice to see you. You too. Thank you so Jess's symptoms include bleeding and diarrhea that can send her to the bathroom up to 30 Excellent. times a day. The cause of the illness is unknown, and there is currently no mainstream cure. Professor Barodi believes an overgrowth of harmful bacteria is responsible. And so today we're going to infuse some new bacteria into you. Look, hey Jess. Hi. Hi. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling good. I'm feeling excited to get started. Excited? Are you nervous at all? Or? I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm more excited just to sort of get started because I want to get better, so... All systems go. <laughs> yeah. Great. Good luck. Thank you. Each day, a group of carefully screened donors deliver their feces to the clinic. They are paid a small fee for their service, but due to the stigma attached, many prefer to remain anonymous. This is all our processing equipment that we use. Believe it or not, it's just normal kitchen equipment. It's like we're about to make pancakes or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we have here, this is a fairly fresh yep. specimen. So the theory is fresh is best. Mm -hmm. This specimen here can actually change someone's way of life quite substantially. The stool is liquefied and mixed with a saline solution before being loaded into syringes ready to be injected into the patient. That's about as fresh as it gets. Uh -huh. The liquid needs to be injected into the top of Jess's colon, and to get there, the professor employs an instrument known as a colonoscope. Still just having a look around, cleaning? No, uh, we just have to get rid of as much of the old poo as possible. After winding its way through the twists and turns of Jess's colon, the colonoscope arrives at its destination. Suck up that liquid because we're almost there. 
With Jess under a general anaesthetic, it's time to inject the healthy bacteria. With the faeces transplanted, the payload of healthy bacteria will seed onto the walls of Jess's colon. With any luck, they'll quickly take root and multiply, replacing the bugs that Professor Barodi believes are causing Jess's colitis. How are you feeling? <laughs> I feel really good, actually. Um, I don't feel any kind of un uncomfortableness or anything, so I'm feeling good and I'm happy that it's, it's done. Professor Barodi has conducted over 3,000 faecal transplants for a variety of gastrointestinal conditions. When treating C. diff patients, he claims a success rate of over 90%. The transplants are considerably less effective for other illnesses such as colitis, and there's still some concern about their safety. But at this stage, many patients like Jess see it as their only hope. There has been this feeling that faecal transplantation is non-kosher. It's not acceptable. It's got the ick factor, but this thing saves lives. It's been four weeks since Jess's transplant, and with her colon back in balance, <laughs> she's in great shape. From a peak of 30 toilet trips a day, she's down to only one. Anyone's going to think that the faecal transplants are a little bit icky or a little bit yucky, but I would definitely say that it's been completely life-changing because I feel like I've got my life back for the first time. Work is now underway to develop a synthetic alternative to faecal transplants and to investigate the connection between imbalances in our internal microbes and many other conditions, including autism, eczema and obesity.